Hi, my name is Kerry Brace, and um, I run a small company called Dark Horse Cues. And I'm gonna try to. This will be my first post on a YouTube, so I'm gonna try to post this. I have a Muchi Q here. Um, should be able to read the name pretty clearly there. This is a. Uh, it's anyways the Muchi designed these cues with um, Irish linen wrap and then put. Um, a finish over the top of it and the finish on this particular cue for this customer had gotten bad and so um, they decided they just wanted to go with a regular Irish linen wrap and for those of you that um, work with cues and understand this about Muchi they um, because they put a finish over the top they put the um, base core of the cue lower than normal for um, you to be able to do a regular Irish linen wrap over the top of it. So the situation here is that what I've got to do is raise the material up high enough to, for me to be able to put an Irish linen wrap on it and have it flush with the, the butt and the forearm of the of the queue. Um, so as I develop this video and put it together I'll, I'll show you what I've done. What I did is um, I actually cut little strips of maple really thin on the table saw less than a 32nd of an inch, about the 64th of an inch wide uh, or thick, and um, have one soaking in water now so that I can wrap it on this cue and see if the thickness is right. It doesn't really matter if the thickness is a little too much. I'd rather have it a little too much as I can sand it down, and um, I'll show you how that goes while I do it. All right. Um, what I've done here, as you can see, this is this is the soaked strip of maple and I cut it at an angle equal to one the beginning angle of this cut so that it works out right is one one revolution of the the cue one whole circumference of the cue is where the cut starts and stops um, I just put a piece of tape on there and line, figure out the distance and then do a straight line wherever it would work out so that um, as I wrap the maple around the butt of the shaft or the butt of the cue um, Right now I've got the wood just drying. I don't have any glue on there and it's actually going to take me about two strips that are each I've got another about 18 inches to go on this and I have the other piece of wood soaking right now So as this dries and gets ready to take form um, It'll thin up a little bit right now. It's obviously just it's like almost Exactly flush with the top of the queue. You can see that but when it dries out It'll be a little bit thinner and then once I glue it on I'll be able to sand it down so I can get it to the exact thickness that I want um, Like I said these strips are pretty thin They're They're less than a 64th of an inch is about the best I could do on my table saw um, to get this All right, then hi, I'm back Carrie from Dark Horse Cues and um I've wrapped this in the maple. It took two pieces, each about 30 inches long. I didn't really feel like cutting a really long strip, really thin, so I decided to just cut multiple strips about 30 inches long, and it, and it did take about a full 60 inches to be able to cover this um, 3 quarters inch wide all the way down. Um, I'm going to let the maple dry probably at least 4 or 5 hours so that it's um, dried enough to be able to not um, keep the wood glue from drying and to be able to keep its shape. Um, I've got it curved around here and it comes all the way down and you can see where the start of the splice is right there and where it runs around. Um, if you have questions on how to do that splice so that you get it even because you don't want to have to fill in too much crap, um, you can Facebook me on darkhorsecues.com just Dark Horse Cues, Facebook like me on there, or you can email me at darkhorsecues um, at gmail.com. But um, I'll continue this after after I get done letting it dry. I'll um, remove it all and glue it down, and I'll be using just like tight bond um, waterproof glue because I don't want it, you know, if there's any moisture to ever get in, I don't want the wood swelling or anything. So um, I'll be using tight bond glue to glue the wood down and then um, get it sanded down to the size. And so the next time you see this, it'll probably be all glued and I'll show it glued before I start sanding it and then we'll continue from there. Thanks. All right. Here we are about four hours later, maybe five, I don't know. Um, I'm going to take the tape off of this. 
and you can see the the wood's released a little bit but not so bad that I can't wind it back tight it's dry enough underneath so that the glue will have good adhesion which is the most important part got um, just a little bit of tape here to remove I'll slide that down out of the way so I can get the glue on underneath take the tape off of this other one Like I said, this is this is pretty thin. It's hard to get it much thinner than that without breaking it. I suppose you can sand it. It's just easier to sand it using a block afterwards. These are not the funnest things to do to try to... I've tried to double wrapping on Muchi Qs and stuff like that and just haven't found anything that I really liked and I decided to try doing this and see how it turns out for those of you that like to play with cues and work on them like I do sometimes you know what you end up charging them I mean I normally charge about forty dollars to rewrap a cue but because of the amount of work that goes into doing a muchi in this particular case um, if it was just refinishing over the top of it I'd still charge 65 or 70 dollars I think that um, by the time this one gets done it's going to be about 60 bucks instead of the regular 40 dollars which is a um, pretty good deal for their point but there's the the maple that I'm going to thicken this up with and I'm going to glue it down and I'll get one piece glued down and then start showing you how the other piece will be glued down so that you don't sit here and watch a bunch of stupid gluing stuff thanks okay all right, let me start this again. What I did here was I took the maple strip that I had soaked in water and gotten to the curve of the butt and wrapped it around and I put um, tight bond glue on the butt and glued the maple strip down, at least the first half of it, and I used long, I have some long rubber band strips, and I suppose you can use the thin surgical tubing, whatever you like. I, I found this method of gluing laminate wood together with um, some bow maker friends of mine that I met some time ago. The, anyways, um, to get the pressure right, what I did is I wrapped the rubber band around and actually turned the lathe on and just pulled the rubber band really tight so that it squeezed the maple strip down and glued it down so that there's no air or anything like that and ran it down and um, and got it so that it sealed pretty good well you really can't tell until after I get the rubber band off and I'm not going to glue the second half on until I take the rubber band and the tape off of this um, section and I'll probably do that and you know a couple hours I don't know a few hours later after it dries and um, pull the tape and the rubber band off so that I can match up this where this little section of the second piece of wood goes and then roll that on down there and um, I'll actually film that while I'm doing it so you can see how I did it um, might be a little time consuming you can fast forward through it if you want I don't care but anyways um, just for shits and giggles thought you might be interested in how I got that to be tight on there hi um, Harry Brace from Dark Horse Cues. I'm back. I finished this um, wrapping of maple on this Muchi and sanded it down. Now, after on hindsight, you can see where my joint splice was there, and I actually the wood started splitting, so I had to cut it in. But it filled in really nice. On hindsight, I looked at this and I thought, you know soaking the wood and wrapping it around and everything it looks really cool and it turned out really nice it's very level 
Um, after sanding it down, it turned out really good. I was able to um, bring it down so that I have just enough lip here for me to be able to uh, get the Irish linen and have it level. So it leveled it out really nice. But like I said, on hindsight, um, looking at this, I think that I could have probably just run straight strips down, got them wet, and um, at three quarters inch wide, you know, the problem is, is that because the, the diameter increases as you go further back the butt, that there would have been some areas, but I probably could have spliced it in okay and just run straight strips, and it would have been a little less work for me. But, um, like I said, this is the first time I've ever wanted to try to, to do this, and when I came up with the idea, I thought, well, I think it'll work out all right, and it did. Um, the joint's really good. There's no gaps or anything that's filled in with glue, so there's no unlevel spots or anything like that, and it sanded really nice, and I wasn't have, didn't have any problem getting it down to the um, level that I needed to be able to do the Irish linen, so I'll, I'm going to do wrap the Irish linen next, but I wanted to show you what this looked like before I started doing the Irish linen and I'll show you how I do my Irish linen. Um, I, I build fishing poles too, fly fishing. I live in Rapid City, South Dakota and there's great fly fishing around here and, and I've been doing fly poles for a long time and there's a method of um, doing wrapping on eyelets that um, I kind of uh, ended up applying to the, my uh, method of doing Irish linen which is, uh, I don't know if it's really that much different than anybody else does it. Um, I had looked online and all this stuff and just um, started doing this. Um, anyways, I'll um, get the Irish linen started and show you how that goes. Oh yeah, one more thing that I wanted to put in here. Um, because the wood is really thin, and even though I use tight bond glue and it's waterproof after it dries, I don't want, when I put the glue on the, the cue um, to glue the Irish linen down, I don't want it soaking into the wood and making it swell. So I'm going to put sanding sealer over the wood, just a thin coat, and I use Cabot. Um, I like it because it dries really fast and it's a really uh, works with all types of finishes and stains that I've used before. But I am going to put some um, sanding sealer on that and get the wood sealed up really good so that it doesn't absorb any moisture and I don't have any problems with the Irish linen coming loose later on or anything. Okay. Hi, I'm back with Dark Horse Cues, and um, we had already talked about how I, I wrapped this all in wood and got it all covered and it all turned out smooth and I sanded it down so that it was the right thickness, and now I'm ready to do the wrap. So I'm going to use a uh, wood glue. This is Elmer's, but it's... Slow this down a little bit. You all right. Um, just run your glue all the way down. You need to be able to put enough glue that it's going to be able to glue the material down. And I like to get a little water on my hands so that I can smooth this out because you do want to get it nice and smooth. And make sure there's enough glue at the beginning of the queue and the end of the queue. And as you go, according to how fast you can wrap this, you might have to add a little water as you go through to keep it nice and moist. So I like to try to keep my hands clean. Um, I'll wrap the ends when I get done wrapping it with, I'll put some masking tape on the cue itself to protect it. And what did it just do? You can go ahead and pause it or stop it for a second. Um, I just take the wrap. I'm going to be wrapping it. I have a reverse, so I'm going to be going in this direction so I can wrap across the top of it. And um, I do, like I had said before, I do this like people that tie fishing, make fishing poles. I'm going to tuck the, the wrap underneath. For two or three wraps, and then I'll trim off that tag end.
and I'll um, just to make sure that I get over nice and tight up against this butt end and use the thread itself to make sure that it's nice and tight. My daughter Alex is my video recorder. Hi. About three wraps is all you need to make sure that you have that tied in there really good. I don't need all of this extra material, so I'm going to get rid of that. The glue will hold it down, and also I'm pulling really tight on this. And what I'm going to do is, now that I've got it started, and I've got everything shoved up against here as tight as I can go, make sure your first couple wraps are nice and snug. See how I'm using that to pull the thread over. You don't, once it gets going, you should be alright to not have to stop every now and then. I like to stop about every inch or so of wrap just to check and make sure that I've got it nice and snug. So now it's ready to go. And I'm going to turn the power on. I get it so that I've got pretty good tension so that as I release the thread, it'll start wrapping. And as you get better at this, you can go faster and faster. I don't like to go overly fast. Like I said, I like to, especially at this beginning, let's slow this down just a little bit. I can already see, I like to stop and just make sure that I don't have any gaps, and I actually have one. And I found one of the best things for pushing these threads over is just an old butter knife. Clean old butter knife. And um, I don't want any gaps in my threading at all. And it feels pretty tight all the way, but I had one little spot there that was kind of, kind of loose. And again, make sure that the glue stays nice and moist. So a couple drops to keep it from drying out. And well, let's see if we can start getting some. And here we go. I pull the string across the top of the other string just barely. You can see how it's rolling down onto it so that it keeps it nice and snug. Turn the speed up just a little bit more. And start running it. Here we go. Most of the time your Irish linen is really well made. think there's a gap right there, but actually when I stopped it pulled the glue up over the top of it. I haven't seen any gaps yet, but she's just being cautious for me, which is good. And I'm going to just pause it for a second, Alex. tension pretty good. Um, I don't know, poundage wise maybe 10 or 15 pounds of pull 
You don't want to pull it so tight that you're going to break the Irish linen, but the stuff is pretty tough. But you do want it tight enough so that it doesn't ever come loose. And um, when you wrap the, when you, when we get done, I'll show you how I put spray starch on and I press it. And I know you can buy those really nice presses for about $165, but I like making things, so I made my own little bearing press for pressing the Irish linen down, and I'll show you how that works. Sometimes you'll get little fuzzies like that, and those just trim off or smash down. I like to take a razor and trim them off. It's just an odd little fuzz in the makeup of the Irish linen, but I said I slow it down and look for gaps, and I don't see any gaps, so I'm going to let it run for about an inch or so. I'm going to turn the speed up just a little bit more. And we're just going to let this run out. Unless I see an obvious gap or an issue with overlapping or something, I should be able to run this all the way down now without any problem. If you've got a foot control on your lathe, you're blessed. I have a variable speed, which just makes it nice, but I'm still working on the, the wiring to put a foot control like a sewing machine pedal on this lathe. They weren't designed with it. And I'm all right with electronics, but I'm not a master. The glue is running in really nice right now. I'm going to slow it down. And just go back and check. Make sure I didn't miss anything by overlapping. And I'm going to wet my glue down just a little bit because it's starting to... I can just tell by the way that it's pushing that it's starting to harden up a little bit. It should be all right. And there's the... Don't worry about putting on too much glue. The glue is going to soak into the Irish linen. It'll dry up really nice when it's done on the end. And here we go again. Should be able to run this all the way out. I don't know, you know, some people have nicer machines than mine, but I really got into this business just doing tips and ferrules and stuff, and that's kind of what this lathe is designed for. It's not a real machining lathe, but it, it works really good for this stuff. And there's a lot of you can do a lot of different things with it. I know that the Q Smith, the Deluxe 2 and everything's a really nice the high tower lathes are great. And um, I know people that use them and have them and swear by them. But I like this because it's very portable. And it packs up into a nice little casket size box that I can throw in the back of my truck without any issues. When I get down to the end, it's just a little bit further here, I'll stop and make sure that everything is done the way that I want it to be and that it's everything snug the way that it should be. I'm not even going to worry about the glue's nice and wet and you can see it pushing through there. And we're almost done. I let it run over. I think I have an issue. I'm just going to roll this out and let it see how it comes out. I just let it run all the way down to the end and then shut it off. But I want to roll back. Move, move it down close here, Alex. I want to look at... Okay, it was just a... I want to make sure that I'm not on top of anything. It's just a thick spot and a little fuzzy there. But everything else looks good. Um, 
move the camera down here. We're just going to roll this across. I go back and I just check before I cut any string or anything. And it's always nice to leave yourself extra. But um, just to make sure I don't have any gaps. So the glue's still wet. I can certainly pull this all the way back off and need to. And, and I've had to do that before where I've missed something or actually rolled back over. But um, this one looks like it turned out good. So bring the camera really close. I'm going to go back about four wraps. Okay, three or four wraps. And then I'm going to use, I'm going to keep about a foot of extra string here. It's my fault knife. So I want to make sure that I have plenty. I cut off my extra string. And now I've got all this extra string sitting out here. And what I want to do is I want to tag it in underneath like I started this out. And when you're building fishing poles, the way you do this is lay a loop. In this case, I'm going to do just an extra piece of Irish linen. And before I, I'm going to get the loop down there. And then I'm going to make sure that I get my glue back in. Because I want to make sure, especially at the end here, that it's glued really good. I'm going to move, adjust the light so it's a little easier for you to see what's going on. Um, let's make sure you got your glue pushed down in there really good. I'm going to go back. Got my loop in there. And I'm going to pull it really tight with my hand and finish these last three or four wraps that I have. And I actually, because you want to make sure that you don't have a gap at the end here, I like to go so that it's higher than it needs, one more than it needs to be. It's like I can just barely fit that in there right now. And so it's, I can tell by the feel that this string is just a little high. It's like one higher than it needs to be, which is good. I'm going to take my tag end now and feed it through this little loop. And pull it tight. And then I'm going to take this knot that I tied, this loop, and I'm just going to yank it really quick like that. I don't need to keep on pulling it all the way through. I can just cut off this extra, which is what I'm going to do. Pull this one back out. And I've got my string through there. Now I'm going to rinse this off just a little bit so you can see what's going on. You can see that one high thread there, right? See how it's, I'm smoothing everything down? Well, this way I know that I'm higher than I need to be. And so what I'm going to do is take this string in and I'm going to start rolling it along until it'll fall in on this side. And as I go along this, I'm just going to make sure that it's, I'm just going to go until it's smooth all the way down and I'm almost there half another wrap or so and that's the end point right there there we go so now I've got my thread all the way down and it's all smooth and it came out really smooth all right I'm going to trim my string off here just by cutting it nice and easy. And I've had people ask me this before, well, doesn't it leave a lump underneath the, the cue? And if you feel it right now, there's a lump. But what I'm going to do is use my handy denny butter knife. And I suppose there's other things you can use, but these work really well. And I'm actually just going to press that down. I'm going to add some pressure on it, and it'll flatten that. And the nice thing about Irish linen is it's got that wax in it. It flattens out really nice. And when I get done here, there won't be any anything raised up. You won't. I mean, if you really, really look for it, you can find it. I've tried the method of drilling holes and putting the putting the thread into the thread into the hole. But 
the, re uh, the reason I don't like it is because you're kind of limited to having that be your last tension hole and you can't adjust the tension or pull back in case you need to fit that last part in there. So now it's all wrapped and there's still high spots of those little threads that are sticking up like uh, I don't even they lay down pretty good so most of the time they're pretty good. Um, where the glue soaked through is okay it's not a problem. I'm going to get a wet rag and I'm going to wash this down. All right. I've got it all wrapped. I got a little glue on the top of the on the top of the threads. I'm just going to soak the Irish linen down with a little water. This will help even that glue out. And you can it does get rid of some of the color when you're doing that. You can see the blue, the black from this is just a black and white Irish linen thread. I like to get it nice and even and then I'm going to dry it. I don't want a lot of water in here. I don't want it to take forever for this to dry and I also want to have the material to be able to soak up some starch. I'm just going to dry that off, a fresh spot. I also want to wash off any excess glue that I had down here or down here. Um, I like using the magic eraser for washing cues, but um, it's kind of hard on finishes, so I usually just use a little water when I'm trying to get these cleaned up. So we're going to slow it down. I'm just going to double check, make sure that I'm all okay, and don't go, oh crap, I've got a gap, but I don't. Everything looks really nice, and this is going to press out really good. And um, like I said, I needed to raise this up so that I was able to get that Irish linen even with the queue. And it's come out pretty darn nice. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. So now that I've got this wrapped, and let me get this wet cloth paper out of here. Clean towel, dry it just a little bit more. And now I'm going to put some spray starch on it. Put my hand under here just so it doesn't spray it all over the place. Doesn't take a lot. You just want to get the. And the reason you use the starch is the starch shrinks the fibers and pulls them tight together when they dry. I'm going to let that. I'm going to rub that in there. Let it soak in. And then before I start pressing, I'm going to put some protective masking tape on the ends of this butt, and then I'll show you how I press. This is the press that I made. Um, I wanted to be able to pivot on this one, and I just used, actually these are just skateboard bearings, or rollerblade bearings. They're cheap if you can buy them that way. And it um, fits right over and clamps on. I put it on, and then... Um, First, is just go through and press it all even. I put the masking tape. I put masking tape on here just to protect the ends. I went to, you know, once enough. But anyway, so I'm just going to run this back and forth and start pressing it down. You don't have to have a lot of pressure. But, um... You don't want to squeeze too hard at first, either. You want this nice and even. And you can you can see that I maybe in the picture you can, I don't know, how dull this is and how shiny it is over here. And how dull it is over here. And as I go up, you can hear the torque turning, slowing the speed down by the blade. Turn the speed up a little bit more. And I'm just pressing it. I'm not using overly too much power. Just enough. I don't want to press it too hard and take a chance of damaging it.
turn it off and just make sure. It's like I had a really white spot as it was running. I'll show you, see that little white streak right there? Uh, so I want to make sure it wasn't a gap in the things, but what it is actually is just a little spot where there's a little extra white and white from the black and white, and so when it's running, but this is getting nice and smooth and shiny. It's turning out really good. I don't see any gaps, so everything's very hunky dory with this. I'm gonna turn the I'm gonna move the light back over, give us a little better lighting. I'm gonna continue to press it for a little bit more, a few more runs. And then I'll check the ends and make sure that they're okay. is not perfectly round so there was a you saw any bobbling around because it wasn't but this turned out really nice it's very smooth and as far as I can tell I don't have any high spots and it's really really even with the, the wood which is exactly what I wanted to accomplish and everything looks great with it so last thing that I like to do is because of the ends being a little bit where that little that little roll where I run the thread under, um, I like to press it with, and stainless steel works really good for this. Some people use maple blocks and they'll hold it on there to try to melt the Irish linen has that natural wax in it, and um, to try to melt that. And instead of using maple blocks, I found that stainless steel butter knives work really good. So I just take two butter knives, and you know you can certainly go higher class if you want to. And I'm just gonna run this right up to the edge and squeeze really hard to make sure that I've got that pressed. And I'll run it down, to make sure that everything's smoothed out. The stainless steel heats up nice, gets warm from the friction. So it heats that natural lanolin that's in the Irish linen up. AKA wax. AKA wax. And I'm going to just run it down to this end and press this end really close. Make sure that it's all good. Of course, being the front and back in, I want to make sure that those are, you know, that's what everybody feels for when they, they pick up the cues. How, do, how is the transition? How well did it transition? And um, like I said, muchis are a pain because they do that, that um, normally there's a hard finish over the top of their Irish linen, and then it, so there's, the linen is lower, and um, it makes it really hard to rewrap Finish taking this tape off. You can see right there. I'm gonna take the camera over for my dumb. Take the camera over, so I'm gonna stop this so you can see there's like no right there. There's like it's like perfectly smooth. It turned out I'm I am so happy with it. Alright, anyways. There's the whole Irish linen wrap on this Muchi Q. And it's done, and it turned out really good. And thank you for watching my video. Good luck on this. If you have any questions, email me at darkhorsecues at gmail.com.